Howdy y'all, welcome to Dysfunctional Equestria, I'm Treebeard, and joining me is Rebecca Shoiket. Shoiket. I got it right the first time. This, she did. It's a learning experience with names. Excellent. Uh, so uh, first, uh, why don't you give us, uh, for the folks at home, give us a quick rundown of your career so far. My career so far? Wow. Well, uh, I started, um, I went to school for musical theater out, out of high school. Um, went to college in tr just outside of Toronto, and then right after that, I, I started working on a cruise ship, and I got a job working doing like singing and dancing and acting on a cruise ship. And uh, and when I moved, I moved back to Victoria, which is my hometown. I realized I couldn't really sustain a long-term career just doing arts there, so I moved to Vancouver, and uh, and found that um, I was able to sing in a bunch of different bands. So I've always been in music and and singing either jazz or pop music or whatever doing that kind of stuff alongside of also doing acting and shortly after I moved to Vancouver I got into doing voice acting and auditioning for things and uh, and since then I've just been doing it all you kind of have to keep your hands in different um, parts of the arts to stay in the arts when you know when you're an artist you have to True kind of keep that. yeah <laughs> otherwise you know if if you want you can do uh, an typical nine to five or, or a job that has more flexibility, but it can be challenging. So I feel really lucky that I've been able to always kind of keep in the arts and since I since I made that move and it's been good. Yeah. So I do voice acting and, and some commercial work and still sing in bands, one with my husband and who's an uh, amazing drummer. And uh, yeah, we do lots of music. It's good. All right. Yeah. All right. And uh through your career in My Little Pony, most of it has been as Twilight Sparkle's singing voice. Yes. What, do you, what can you tell me about that experience? Well, it's been great, although I don't get a, a, an opportunity to work with the cast as much, you know, because uh, if I'm not doing voice acting, I'm not in the room usually with the other actors. So it's been really uh, great getting into doing Sunset Shimmer because I finally get to, you know, be in full scripts with them. It's good because when you're doing the when we're doing the singing parts, we're usually brought in individually to get, you know, get through the music quicker and get this, um, the songs out and get the different parts layered and things that they're, they're needed and um, it's just faster that way and so, you know, in a, like in any, any industry, time is sort of money, so you got to get in and out as fast as possible. But with the, with the actors in a script, it's easier to get the, um, the full scope of the emotions and everything and working with each other as opposed to when you're going in to do a song and it's like line, 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 and take, take, take. It's also a lot of pressure too to, um, you know, to be singing in front of others. Sometimes it, it can be harder for uh, some people and, and not for others. So, yeah. So it's been nice to transition from, from just doing Twilight singing to, to being acting in scripts and stuff too. Yeah. But, but then I don't always get to be, I'm not working like, Every day in the studio, singing like Twilight, because you know there aren't that many that many songs, <laughs> and the the theme song doesn't get re-recorded every show. It's just <laughs> it's just done. So so I don't get to um, be perpetually in it, which is you know not not uh, amazing, but I still get to be in it. So it's good. All right. With the uh, with the coming of Sunset Shimmer, you've been in both Equestria Girls movies, mm -hmm. and with both movies, the Overall opinion the fandom had of them changed from the first one to the second one. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you react to that sort of change of heart when it came to the movies and by extension to your character? Um, well, I'm really glad that the fandom embraced Equestria Girls for for the most part. I know there's there's some people who are, aren't excited about it, but I I was um, I was really excited that they liked Equestria Girls because, like I said, that was my first chance as a, to get on as a VA. And so, um, I I liked the 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 writing. I really liked what they how the they changed um, not changed, but how they helped Sunset sort of grow through her shortcomings and her negative space and getting coming out of that, and offered the extension of the hand of friendship. And so she she's a challenging character because she's had this huge arc from going almost like like crazy crazy evil to being um, really fragile and having to build up from there even though she's still a strong personality she's been 
she's she's you know hit rock bottom and she's got to climb her way back up but she's got people around her to help her do that so it's quite a struggle to um, to perform that huge range but it, but I was so pleased that the that the fans seem to like it it's good because I I worked hard at it so you know when you see your work being appreciated it's great uh, now that we got the bones down the way, you can get to some of the fun stuff. Okay, yeah. what's right. up? Yeah, we'll light it up then. <laughs> All right, so uh, a little bit of a silly question. Uh, okay. What, what's your jam outside of work? What do you like to listen to outside of <laughs> doing your music work? Um, well... If it's show tunes, there's no shame, I will not ask you. <laughs> <laughs> she will be the first to applaud. I will be the first to applaud you. <laughs> Actually, I was we were I was listening to Into the Woods with my driver the other day. He happened to have some Sondheim on there. I'm like, ooh, ooh, Into the Woods. Let's listen to that. So, um, uh, you know, because I'm I'm usually learning songs and stuff I uh, that are that are all current. I I tend to like to go back and listen to some jazz or listen to Ricky Lee Jones or some old you know folky poppy stuff from the '70s or Carol King or something that's kind of mellow and laid back but with funk and you know, and some good grooves like Steve Gadd and stuff, and just chill out to that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right, and uh, next one. Yeah, I I did not suggest this one, so I'm just going to apologize ahead of time. What do you prefer, Reefer Madness the musical or High School Musical? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I actually, um, I was actually in Reefer Madness the musical. That's, that's right. why it's so, here. Oh, you guys. We looked up, every, we, we we looked up everybody's <laughs> IMDb pages. Yeah, no, we actually, all the shameful parts. It's um, it's it was a super fun show to record. We did. All, I was in. I was in a choir group. Well, not. We were we were hired as individual actors to sing all to be in the chorus of all of these choral parts, and the writers um, were phenomenal, uh, and so we had so much fun in this recording studio doing all like we went from everything from brain eating zombies to angry um, angry parents to like teenagers at the 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 jive, uh, jiving teenagers and. Uh, um, what were some of the other characters we played? Um, we may at some point have been dancing pot brownies or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> like, it, it got it got pretty crazy, uh, but but it was a huge range of styles of music and that and it was so much fun. So and the people I got to work with were awesome. So that was yeah, I'm partial to Reefer Madness. <laughs> I don't know too many high school musical songs. <laughs> What's next? Let's see, if you could switch roles with any of the cast members, if they take Sunset Shimmer, you take whoever they have, who would it be? Oh, maybe <laughs> Spike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable doing the little boy voices. It's fun. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. You take them. <laughs> so uh, now that you've, uh, now that you've kind of been embraced by the fandom, uh, what, what are your thoughts on it? By now, you've probably had an opportunity to interact with them in one way or another. So, what? Tell us a little bit about those experiences. Um, well, I guess this is my, I think it's my fourth con, mm -hmm. and uh, I what I love about the the community is that it's so open arms and so uh, all encompassing. There's so much inclusion in the community that uh, it's it's pretty mind blowing to have such a huge phenomenon that's spreading all around the world. Um, through wh whether it's through internet or personal connections, um, Tom here is from Norway and he's come all the way to help out with this convention. So people come from far and wide just to be a part of this experience, and I love that about the <laughs> about. I'm sounding very Canadian right now. You guys are gonna okay. tease me later. Thanks <laughs> your Canadian accent. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> it's great. Um, Terry I Clark, if Terry Clausen ever sees this, he's gonna give me some notes. I have an awful Southern California accent. <laughs> Half of my vocabulary is dude. <laughs> Excellent, dude. Um, I can't remember what I was saying now. But no, so so I love that the, that the show has inspired this incredibly inclusive and how and caring community. Yeah. And, uh, all right. So, uh, any final thoughts to leave us with? So before we wrap up. Um, just keep on doing what you're doing, bronies. <laughs> Spreading the love, man, because it's so good. It's such a good, a good message. I also like that. Um, it's uh, there's a lot of like letting the kids be the kids and 
you know, that's another thing about the conventions that I like is that the kids are really honored, and because it's a kids show, but uh, everybody's allowed to embrace it and does, and you know, that's important to me. All right. Well, you heard it here, <laughs> folks. I'm Trey Beard. This was Rebecca Shoket. Shoket. Yeah. Okay. Nicely good. Done. Good. And this is Duster Don Horse, and you're watching Dysfunctional mm -hmm. Equestria. We'll catch you all later. Okay. I